Long before he was House Majority Leader, before he was even a member of Congress, Kevin McCarthy was a California State Assemblyman. He was elected back in 2002 and chosen in his first term to become the Republican leader there. One of his Democratic colleagues then, the State Assembly Speaker, is now a colleague on Capitol Hill, Congresswoman Karen Bass. And she joins us now to shine some light on Kevin McCarthy's legislative style. Congresswoman Bass, thank you very, very much for being up with us <laughs> from Los Angeles <laughs> even. I have to Thanks. ask you, from your experience, Kevin McCarthy, was he willing to work with Democrats when you were together in the California Assembly? Uh, yes, he definitely was willing to work with Democrats. But remember, uh, Democrats definitely had the majority, so he had to. Uh, <laughs> and, and, and I think what, what has happened is quite ironic, because when Kevin be, uh, was in Congress, one of his first assignments was to recruit Republicans to run. So I think it's really sad, because it seems like some of the ones that have turned on him are the ones that he was also uh, helpful in, in them winning their elections to Congress. Mm -hmm. Now, how has he evolved from his time in the California Assembly to his time in the House of Representatives? Have you seen a change? Well, one, no, I actually think he's been pretty consistent because he was very deliberate when he was in Sacramento about building relationships. He was well thought of, very friendly guy, well liked, and uh, he systematically built relationships in Sacramento and he did the same thing in Washington, D.C., so I think he's been consistent. However, the politics in D.C. are so extreme, you know, I definitely see him as, as more conservative than he was in California, but hmm. I think he's had to be that way, especially serving in the role as whip. You know, one of the things I find interesting is that in all the conversations about Congressman Paul Ryan, they've been centered around the fact that Paul Ryan is a policy guy. He's House Ways and Means Committee chairman. I believe he was Budget Committee chairman before that. Someone with big policy chops. But when you hear the discussion about Kevin McCarthy, it all focuses, it focuses on personal style, as you were just talking about, his ability to get along with people. It, has that been, I mean, the, there's one thing to be able to get along with people, but is that a detriment, uh, uh, something that's bad for someone like Kevin McCarthy? Well, I think that they certainly are using that against him, but if you think about his role as whip, you know, the, the purpose and the job of a whip is to collect votes and to make sure that legislation passes so you are not often working on your own legislation. Now, I have worked with uh, McCarthy on legislation. We worked together on legislation related to foster care as well as sex trafficking. Mm -hmm. And he was instrumental in making sure that that legislation got through. So I think one of the big differences is, is that he's not been a committee chair. And uh, given that your tenure in Congress is so long, uh, I think Paul has always been known as a policy wonk, mm -hmm. and Kevin has not chaired a committee. So, you know, maybe he didn't have the opportunity to develop policy in the same way that Paul did. Mm -hmm. And one more question. NBC Black has a report out that says, uh, this is an analysis, says, could the Black Caucus leverage votes in race for the speaker? And one of the things um, that's in here, it says that it could come down to the point of the third or fourth ballot where the, the Congressional Black Caucus, and you can correct me on the number, I believe it's 46 members? Yes, 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 For, yeah, it is. 46 members that they could be a block that could determine who the next speaker is. How likely is that? And who well, would the CBC be looking for? Well, I will tell you that uh, I can say pretty comfortably that the CBC is going to be voting for Nancy Pelosi as speaker. <laughs> Any of you have a question? Susie, did you have a question for Karen Bass? I saw you. Yeah, I, I guess one thing I was wondering about is, is how successful you think uh, McCarthy actually had, had been as whip. I mean, one of the things that kind of struck me was that um, he, he was whip at, at points in which um, Boehner, in an attempt to try to appease conservatives in the caucus, would try to push some kind of life, lack, uh, last minute deal through, um, but it would end up falling apart and they would end up having to go over and, and get Democrats to go over to, to get a fiscal cliff deal to, to be able to, to keep the government open and so on and so forth. So I'm just wondering how, how sure. effective you think he's actually well, been in his uh, job as well. Well, well frankly, um, you know, having served in the job as speaker uh, and listening to your early conversation, I think that Speaker Boehner uh, was, was relatively weak. I mean, I think that he should have started from a premise that we're going to get legislation passed, and if we need Democratic votes to do it, that's what we're going to do. So that whole premise of the Hastert rule, which he's even distanced himself from, 
I think was wrong to begin with, and I think that they were too soft to begin with. So, you know, I, I would think in the opposite way, that uh, they should have been much more hard-lined, but that has to come from the speaker, not the whip. Mm -hmm. And one more question, Congresswoman Bass. Like I was saying before, all the focus is on Paul Ryan. One, do you think, do you think he, he would jump in and become speaker? And two, how well do you think he would, he would do? Uh, well, I, I mean, I think it's a real interesting question. I mean, my own opinion, and I don't know this from talking to him, I think he has presidential ambitions. And I think if you have presidential ambitions, you don't want to sully yourself with being speaker because I don't care who the speaker is, you have to make tough decisions and you make enemies. And then you know that some of the, the real conservatives have said that they're unhappy with him around his stance on immigration and his uh, budget deal. So I'm not really sure that they wouldn't eat him alive the way they have eaten uh, Kevin alive and, um, and Boehner. And on that note, Congresswoman Karen Bass, again, <laughs> thank you very much for being on this morning. Thanks for having me on. Still ahead.